What's going on guys? My name is Derek. I like cars and if you've just joined us, this is my 2001 Subaru Outback. I've owned this car since high school and it's in a bit of a state right now. So welcome to the series. We are rebuilding this car. Today, rather than cut rust out like we have been in most of the videos, we're doing something cool. Let's get it. I have to my left a surprise. These are fender flares. They come factory on a 2005 to 2009 Subaru Outback. This is not one of those. But in this episode, we're going to start getting close to making them fit with force. All right, to demonstrate the predicament we're in, here's the quarter of the car, currently with no flare on it. Here's the flare. Wide body. Okay, cool, we're done. Apart from we're not, because due to the unique way that this car is designed compared to the fourth gen, the shut line of the door is different. On this, it's a smoother transition, which you can kind of see. It's a pretty, pretty smooth curve. On here, a little more jagged. It cuts in deeper here. Because of that, this is not even remotely close to being a bolt on a fair. Mostly because there's no bolts holding on, it's all clips. Now, I like that because I don't love the riveted wide body look. Um, I'm gonna say wide body a lot in this video. I'm aware that these are just fender flares. This is not actually a wide body of the car. That's just the terminology that I know as a zoomer. So, there's a couple of options for how we can get this to line up. Because of the way the fourth gen is, the third gen, the rear bumper line is a straight line to where the wheel arch is. The fourth gen, it is slightly curved. You can't really tell. It doesn't look like it when you hold it up to the car, but it is. That's because on the fourth gen, the flare actually continues into the rear bumper. So we don't actually have all the pieces we need to make this happen tonight. It wasn't going to happen tonight anyway. At a future point, I am going to be going back to the junkyard I got these from, probably with a hacksaw, and cutting off the parts of the bumper I need. Yes, this will probably ruin the bumper for somebody else. However, it's a Subaru Outback. There's a shitload of them in junkyards. So if you have any complaints about that, do feel free to keep those complaints to yourself. All right, now, on the fourth gen, this piece simply clips into the body of the car. That's fair enough, it's made for it. On this car, because of the way the cladding is, there's a separate piece that goes right here. This guy, to be exact. Now, that is made to go right there, and it does so beautifully. However, this is, Despite being close, not the same thing. So, somehow, I have to merge this with this to get it to actually sort of hold a shape that I would actually like it to have. Here's where it gets extra tricky. This is the equivalent to this piece on a third gen. They have molded the front half of the flare into the door cladding. Yes, this looks fine when it's on the 4th gen. This is not even remotely close to working on here. You're not really going to be able to see from that angle, so I'll move it here in a second. But, if I line this cladding up at the bottom of the door where it should live, this doesn't really work. So I'm going to have to get creative. And get creative I shall, because to make this whole thing happen, these two will soon be unconjoined. I have a Dremel. I have a can-do attitude, and I'm cutting this piece off. Here's one I made earlier. Not really. I've clamped the two pieces together for the driver's side. They, they mostly meet up. It does not ideal up here, but I figure I can fill that in with something. Magic, probably. This piece is also probably going to have to get cut off because it's just there's nowhere for it to go on the car. So that's out of here. Some of these clip tabs don't actually meet up to the body at all because of depth. And this piece, I believe, is probably going to get shaved down at the very least. My plan, with this side anyway, 
is basically to keep this piece intact, mostly, and merge it with the back side of the 4th gen flare, because I know that will fit. Is it going to work? Maybe. And if it doesn't? Oh well, I was into these flares for 27 US dollars. Some of the more eagle-eyed viewers out there may be able to spot that this piece and this piece are two different colors. That's because the one this came off of broke. As I said, it's a Subaru Outback, so there's a lot of them in junkyards, so I simply found another one and didn't break it. As for this side, I believe it had a little c in it somewhere, but I don't remember where. Obviously, thanks to the magic of the $25 Harbor Freight plastic welding kit, that won't be an issue. That's to come later. For now, I've got the Dremel plugged in, I've got my safety squints on, and I'm just going to start cutting and see what happens. to see what it looks like on the car. I'm gonna go ahead and tape these together so that I don't have to worry about holding them. And then we'll see how far off we are. Okay, as you can see, I've got this piece reclipped in. And that's mostly as a reference point to see another step that might happen further down the road. So I'm gonna line this up here, line that up there, and yeah, that's that's still pretty far off, I'd say. It looks cool. It's really cool to have a visual of it, but <sighs> That's what I was afraid of. A lot of people over the years have told me that I should I should smooth in these ridges or I should get rid of the cladding and get legacy doors. And I've always said no. Because I don't know why. I'm a fan of it. I think it looks good. It gives it a little more character that the side of the legacy doesn't really have. If anything, the regular legacy is a bit boneless. Now, that being said... I'm adding some bones with the flares, so, I mean, I guess I could. I could just get legacy trim and either fill in the lower holes or figure something else out with the bottom half of the doors, because if you haven't seen it on the parts car, it looks bad without cladding. <laughs> I'll show you. Wonderful, smooth cladding. Unwonderful, lumpy door. Yeah, it's... I believe this is identical on the Legacy. I think you can just put the trim there and call it a day. That might be wrong, and I might be f***ing around and finding out, but I think that's the case. The lower part... It, you can't really tell because of how dirty the car is, but it's got all sorts of weird ridges and lumps. And it is also tapered in slightly compared to the rest of the car. It's not, it's not flat like the rest of the door. Now, if I wanted to get cool, I could try and make the fourth gen cladding work. But I'm pretty sure the doors are different lengths. So it's, I'd have to cut up multiple of them and weld them together. And it's going to look goofy, I think. 
but that might be the best option we have. Because I'm not quite at the stage where I want to take this cladding piece off, I'm going to take it off of this side on the parts car, fit it up, and see if we're any closer. I lied. There's way too much stuff to unbolt to get that one off, so I'm just going to go ahead and take the cladding off Scoob. It's coming a lot sooner than I thought it would. Now what this job entails is the aforementioned can-do attitude, ruining my fingers, and my trusty clip remover tool. Let's get it. That comes off pretty easily because it wasn't on there very well. This might not, we'll see. Obviously this car is getting painted or wrapped or something down the line, so I don't care about the paint as much as I formerly did. It's held on with some adhesive along this top side. There's a clip. There's another clip. I'm going real slowly and carefully on this, only because since at the junkyard I did break one of the fourth gen trims, I'd really not like to break this, even though I am probably going to end up deleting them. But I have a good amount of mechanical sympathy, despite this car exploding. And I don't like damaging stuff at all. It terrifies me. No idea why. Probably because I know it's expensive to fix if it goes wrong. Just like this entire car. I'm also burying the lead a little bit. Wide-bodying scoop? What? Yes, that is relatively big news. Um, I have not announced it before, and it kind of just happened. Uh, as you can kind of see from some of the other videos, if you haven't watched those, go check out the playlist. There's a lot of rust in these quarter panels. And initially the plan was I bought the parts car because I wanted to save the quarter panels and reuse them and put them in scoop. However, that's a shit lot of work. And as much as I would love to be the one to properly spend the time to learn how to weld and get it done, I gotta be honest with myself, I'm not that guy. And I don't want to ask Hayden to do it because he's busy building his own damn car. So I figured I would be a less selfish friend than usual and take the easy way out. We're at the stage where it would be so much easier, so much easier, to just... Cut the inner quarter a little bit more, cut the outer a little bit more, make some room for a bigger tire, better wheels, and then weld them back together and just put a flare over it. It is possible that this will introduce more rust. I'm going to do everything in my power to make sure that does not happen. I've seen some shit with wide body installs. I am not going to do that. I'm going to rust proof the absolute shit out of this to the best of my ability and my financial ability so that's that's where we're at the rears are one thing the rears kind of have to happen for that reason the fronts I could technically leave alone but I'm not going to which I shall explain after I take this panel off mmm that sounded breaky unfortunately I can't really see it so maybe it didn't break who knows well, yep, there's the clip, and it is not wanting to play ball. That just broke. Luckily, it was the clip and not the trim, so this can probably still be saved. Oh, there's so much adhesive. So much adhesive. There's the pieces of the initial clip that broke. Luckily, I haven't broken any more yet. Now we're on the very last one, which means it will break. I don't make the rules, that's just how it is. Ah! It didn't break! Look at that. That is 20-something years of bullshit. This car, if you knew me from my Las Vegas days, has seen a lot of the dry lake bed out past Boulder City. I'm guessing that's what all that is. That is very thick. Just like me. I'm going to give this a quick clean just because it's going to annoy me 
if I don't. Nothing too fancy, just the scratchy special. Straight up water. Yep, that has turned into mud. So that's what a wet lake bed looks like, I suppose. I almost had a moment because there were a couple of small spots in there and I thought it was figuring out how to rust the door. That would have upset me greatly. However, that didn't happen. It's kind of nice to see okay condition wintergreen paint. I've hated the color of this car since the day I bought it. Wintergreen, or as I called it, lesbian mint green, is really the defining color of this gen of Subaru Outback. If you've ever seen a Subaru Outback, it was either white or this color, and never liked it. But in certain lighting, in good condition, it's a pretty good color, actually. Good thing it's not staying this color. Okay, I've got the flare, so now I'm going to fit it up, and we'll see, once again, how far off we are here. I'm pretty sure a lot of this is going to have to get cut off because it's just gonna be too thick. The fourth gen's completely differently designed than this car. I knew they were not similar. I didn't realize they were this not similar. But let's give it a go anyway. Ooh, okay. Okay, that's something. We're getting a little closer. We're getting a lot closer, actually. I can see where it's hitting. That's a lie, I actually can't see shit. The other issue we're gonna have is the gas door is absolutely blocked by this, so that'll have to get figured out. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. I did not think that part was gonna fit up correctly, and it doesn't. So, next up on the chopping block is this section. So we're gonna probably cut it flush with this, because I think this has a better shot of making it. I did quite a bit of work uh, off camera because it wasn't worth showing on camera, but we got a flare, guys. Obviously, taped on, not the same thing. We got a gap here because of surfacing changes. Probably a little bit of a gap in here because there's a hole so the tape's not sticking great. We got issues, obviously, here because it dips in. And here it dips in and this dips out. This is close enough I might be able to cut up that cladding piece and make it work. The problem there is, if I do that with the cladding piece, this is really short. So we run into this problem. The flare is there correctly. This, I'd have to figure out how to attach and line it up with the bottom there. Oh, you know what? That is closer than it used to be. That is actually... Oh my god. Dude, this might work. I'm doing a terrible job filming because it's just me. But I'm going to take the clips out of here and see how close we are there. Y'all have actually watched me figure something out live on the video. I didn't actually think this was going to work. I had a vision in my head. Maybe it was going to be close enough. This is this is gonna work. I can actually do this. Obviously we got flare. And we got cladding. That's the that's all the gap I have to fill. That's it. That's totally doable. I didn't really expect Fourth Gens have a longer wheelbase than this car, so 
I don't know where it came from because it looks like the door on the fourth gen is actually shorter than this car, which doesn't make any re any real sense. So it's got to come from the front, which means the front is going to be worse to do because I have to cut down and figure out how the body line is going to work. Whereas this, I just have to add, and that's doable all day. <sighs> I'm really excited about this. This is so much closer than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> oh, dude, I am hype. I think that's that might be as good of a point as I need to end it. Oh, no, I said I was going to show you the front. I'll show you the front. It's not going to be as good. Let's just soak that in in its entirety just a little bit more. That is so rad. I've never been a huge 4th gen fan because they're kind of overhyped and overdone, but the flares are cool. Now, as for the front, this is at the passenger side, here's the driver's side. So I've, I've marked this one out a little bit. It's, it seems like it should be better, but because of the way Outback fenders are designed, the surfacing is a lot different. So if I line that up somewhat near the bottom, it's like it would work. You gotta bend it a lot, and it it doesn't really want to fit nicely. So that's gonna be. I think the fronts are actually gonna be a much bigger challenge than the rears, which wasn't really expecting that. But here we are. Nice. Obviously, I accomplished no actual plastic welding and no real work tonight. Uh, I've got it cut up, so that's something. But conceptually, this is huge. So, I'm going to end the video here. If you guys want me to just document this whole thing in one long video, let me know in the comments. But this is going to be the intro to this. This kicks off the Scoob Widebody. Check out my new Instagram page for the YouTube channel specifically, at Official Derek Likes Cars. I'll leave a link in the description. Thanks also to our continued sponsor, Mountain Crest Products. They're in the description also. Thanks for watching. Take care. Have a great day.